Hey guys, it's Voss, and today we're building a 6X 1080 Ti rig entirely off an ATX PSU, and it's a big one. So let's kick it off with the parts we need. Well, first off, I'm taking a trio, which if you don't know what a trio is, check out this video, check out my farm. You know that I built my farm originally almost entirely out of trio mining rigs because they're very easy to build, simple to build, easy to deploy. So I have a ton of those, but I'm increasing my efficiency and my density. So I'm taking these and I'm taking the cards off and I'm turning it into a six card rig because I use these because they had six PCIe slots so that I could hopefully do this down the road if everything worked out and I didn't go in a downward spiral of massive debt. So the card we're using today is actually the MSI Aero. It's really cool, 1080 Ti. It's actually, I would say it's my favorite one, but I haven't seen them for sale in several months. So don't really count on getting any of these. And you know, if I could, I wouldn't make all my 1080 Ti's that card, but I can't. So, so with that said, I'm gonna find the best value 1080 Ti's that I can find and put them in the parts list to give you guys the best options there for building this rig out today. Other than that, if you subscribe to my channel, same parts as always, got this Lexar, 32 gigabyte USB drive that's gonna serve as our hard drive. We are using Simple Miner. If you wanna see a full Simple Miner setup, subscribe because tomorrow or the next day, over the next couple of days, I've decided I'm gonna have a full breakdown usage of setting up Simple Miner and just the basics of using it because that's been one of my top questions lately since I've started using that. CPU, we're using a G4400. Again, you know, like all my builds, we're using the Crucial Ballistics RAM, it's DDR4 2400. Again, like always, for the frame, we're using the uh, Parallel Miner frame. I love these frames. This is the uh, V2 model, I think it's called. It has the fans on it. This is gonna be really helpful because as I increase my rigs and my density, you know, my place is getting hot and I need more airflow, more cooling. So, you know, this is gonna aid in helping to, you know, just keep the temps down. As always, I'm a big fan of the way they package this stuff. I mean, that's a pretty secure pack and there's not much else you can do without getting ridiculous about it. I'm also an affiliate, you know, full disclosure. So if you do wanna pick this stuff up, I really appreciate it if you guys use my links because that really helps support the channel and support new content being made. So I just brought Tails in to cover a couple of the basics. If you're wondering about RAM, the serial number goes towards the board and it snaps right in. There's only one way it goes in and it's just that simple. The CPU, CPU installation is super easy. As you can see here, I mean it literally just, you just place it down, it has two ears. You can only go in one way, oriented properly with the riding lining up with how you expect it to go with the board and you just snap right in, boom, done. Again, the risers are literally plug and play. You plug them into the board, you plug them into the riser, and those are set up. So let's get to it. I'm excited to use this giant 1600 watt PSU. You know, again, obviously server PSUs rock, but you know, there's a time and place for everything. And really, there's no denying that EVGA makes awesome products. So here we go. All right guys, the way this frame set up, assembly is super easy. Basically, there's just four pieces that you're just gonna push in or kind of snap in, lock into place into the rest of the frame. You know, I could do it on the table, but it's way easier if you just put it on a solid, more solid surface, like a concrete floor, something like that. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my body weight to push this down. You could probably be a little more, a little more smart, lube it up and uh, really get it in there. But... All right guys, so we're gonna open the behemoth that is the 1600 watt titanium two or T2 by EVGA. And if you're wondering why I went with the titanium over a platinum or whatever else, it's like 10, 20 bucks more for the titanium and why not just upgrade it one step further at that price point. So while we're here, let's talk about what matters, the connections. This PSU has nine VGA slots. What can we do with nine? Well, we've got six cards and I haven't double checked, but assuming we have the standard EVGA cables that are an eight pin plus a six pin, we can run six cables to six 1080 Ti's. And that's gonna leave us with three VGAs. What are we gonna do? We're gonna split each riser and run two risers off one VGA cable, utilizing all nine of the VGA connections. You can run SATA connections to the risers, in my opinion, as long as you don't split more than two risers off of it. But why do that? when you have the VGA option right here. And you can just feel the cable, it's obviously more heavy duty, more robust. We're gonna utilize the CPU one or two, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna plug the end to the board, it needs one eight pin CPU connection, and then obviously the 24 pin motherboard cable. And that's all we need for this build. This is the simplest, easiest six card, big card, 1080 Ti card build possible. This is as easy and simple as it gets. This power supply is rated to run on 110 volt, standard US electric up to 240 volt, which is you know basically an upgrade to more powerful electric. With that said, you know, 
the higher your voltage, the less load you're going to carry in a sense. So this would use a few less watts on 240 volt as it would to 110 volt and it's also going to use about half the amps. So they don't translate exactly but there's some calculators online to give you an idea. But basically this is going to be pushing it, running it, you know, just in your house but you should be fine just if you have this in a room and you're running just this rig on the standard 15 amp breaker. Alright guys, so I just opened it up, checked out all the cables. We're going to have five that are 8 pin plus 6 pin. And if you don't know what that means, 8 pin basically just means these 8 little prongs. And on most 1080 Ti's, you're going to need an 8 pin and also a 6 pin to plug in, which looks exactly like this. See? 8 pin, 6 pin. So we've got five, which means we're going to need a splitter for one. Cool, no big deal. And then for the risers, we've got three more of the VGAs that are just the 8 pin. So I'm going to take this splitter right here and I'm going to use this to plug in to all of the PCIe risers. And we're going to be golden. Minimal wires, maximum safety. That's what it's all about. So one of the many reasons why this parallel minor frame rocks is because on the right side it's drilled out to set up an ATX PSU and on the left side it's drilled out to set up a server PSU. So let's take the behemoth that is the 1600 watt and you'll notice that there's these mounting screws right here on the side. So these are going to line up perfectly with these holes and also have the PSU vent away from the rig which is good to not you know just be throwing excess heat onto your stuff. So I went ahead and installed these right here to offer some support for the PSU. You probably don't need to do it, it's probably not a big deal, but you know I try to build things for longevity and you know with that said I don't want there to be constant pressure right there on the screws because without those the PSU kind of sits you know like this. Not that's exaggerated, but just a little bit. But you can see if I line this up now, it is uh, it's much more even and it's really resting kind of like right here and the screws will then secure it. So again, you know, with everything, I try to make things as good as I can. So you can see I got the risers all wired up. There's only one zip tie right here and pretty clean. Pretty simple, pretty clean. Right now I'm zip tying these uh, little connections down here because I'm a big advocate of getting the eight pins, really the six plus twos, because then they're much more versatile. So, you know, plugging them into the riser, I only need six pins, obviously. Well, I just go ahead and I just zip tie this little connection down and we're gonna end up with a much cleaner build. Alright guys, so when I just mounted the actual cards on here, nice clean, perfect fit on this frame, and now let's uh, power it up. Alright guys, so we're all wired up, everything's hooked up, PCIe cables are all connected to their appropriate GPUs and the risers, just threw some zip ties on here, nothing crazy with the wire management, but honestly this is one of my cleanest builds yet, just grouped them together and threw zip ties on them, we've got one, two, three, four on here. Just, man, this is pretty nice, easy, simple, manageable. I haven't tucked the power switch anywhere yet, so I still need to do that, as well as manage the Molex uh, power cable for the fans. It's plugged in right here, and uh, you know I'm going to mess with that in a little bit after I just do a test boot and make sure everything is uh, operational. So at this point, we've completed the build, and all I need to do is hook up Ethernet and then also Simple Miner, which again, I'm going to have some stuff breaking down how to use Simple Miner. It's very, very simple and easy. Alright guys, so I went ahead and booted the rig up and it's been mining for about 15 minutes or so. I'm running 200 core, 500 memory, and 200 watts. So I'm going to have these settings and you can see them right there. And I'm going to showcase my pool settings. Uh, I'll just copy paste it into the description below so you guys know exactly what I'm using in SMOS. Again, I'm going to have a full video on it soon. But if you just want to take that, say you copy my EWBF pool settings and then you just copy the way I have it set up as far as the core memory power limit. And you can just copy and paste those settings. All you have to do is change your actual wallet address to change from mining to my address to your address and your rig is going to be operational. Pretty easy stuff. So right now I'm hashing about consistently 4,000 souls. Which, you know, isn't the craziest 1080 Ti numbers, but, you know, still efficient and dense. This is obviously going to get moved to 240 volt because my farm is all 240 volt and that's going to help it run a little bit more efficient and everything. But this is just an example that you can run this in any setup. And again, that is why the ATX PSU is very cool. You know, this T2 is more expensive, but it's ultra efficient and so easy. That's the whole point of this build. It was so easy with everything just based around that PSU. You know, and obviously I like server PSUs. I'm a big fan of them and I prefer server PSUs. But I don't just write off ATX and just because I'm affiliated with Parallel Monitor doesn't mean I'm blind. You know, 
I see great benefits to both sides. All right guys, so I got the rigging here all set up on 240 volt stabilized, and I'm pushing almost uh, 4,400 soles, which is uh, pretty impressive. It's a really big increase. Even with 100 core and zero memory and 200 watts, each card was put down to stable 700 soles, which is a pretty big difference than we were getting on the 110, 120 volt, you know, standard uh, electric in there. So again, you know, your mileage may always vary. This is just my setup, what went down here today. But you know, I couldn't recommend upgrading your electric to 240 volt because that's really the only serious way to mine. All right, guys. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe to the Boss Coin YouTube channel. Let me know in the comments what you liked, what you didn't like, what you want to see in the next video, what you want to see covered. And you know, I read that stuff. I'm trying to listen to you guys and make it all happen. So again, see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>